Well hello, my name is Claire and I'd like to welcome you to this act of worship from Tabernacle Baptist Church, Penarth. You know, whoever you are, you are welcome. Wherever you are watching this, you are welcome. And indeed, whenever you are watching this, you are welcome. And we are so pleased that you are joining us. But before we move into a time of sung worship, I've just got a few notices to share. The first is that next Sunday, that's the 28th of March, we're going to be having a guest speaker. We're really excited to be able to invite Dave Llewellyn, a good friend to TABS, and he is at the moment a regional minister for the Southern Counties Baptist Association. The service will be live on Zoom and you'll be able to find all the login details on the notice sheet. Second notice is that on the 31st, that's Wednesday, the 31st of March, we're going to be having two church members meetings. They will be back to back and they both have a short agenda. And if you're a member of the church, the details, uh, the agenda and the login details will be sent to you along with some papers for you to consider. You know, if you're not a member, we would love to be able to invite you to join us in this journey and to be part of the family of God in this place. Uh, and if you'd like, if you're interested in membership, then, then do speak to any of the elders. Um, our emails are online. Please get in touch. And finally, we are moving towards Easter. We've been working through the series on reliable witnesses and that series is going to continue right through Holy Week where each day there will be a meditation for you and it will be taken from the point of view of somebody who witnessed, somebody who spent time with Jesus in that last week. And we would be just thrilled if you would log on and share that journey with us. But I'm going to hand over to Matt to worship, but let's just pray. Holy Spirit, would you fall wherever we are, Lord, whenever we are watching this, Lord, would you come? We invite you. We invite you into our homes. We invite you into our hearts. Would you move this morning? Would you be with us as we worship you and commit ourselves to you afresh? Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Amen. Good morning, church, and welcome to worship. Um, on Thursday evening, uh, myself, some of the worship team and some of the production team went into church um, to record some songs for this morning's service um, and we all sort of collectively realised how much we've missed playing together, worshipping together um, and praising God, it's something that we've, you know, we do individually from our homes but now, uh, it's been such a long time since we've done it as a, as a, as a, as a body um, and yeah, it was what a privilege it was. Um, and I just want to read out some of the lines from the first song. All glory to God who is able, all power and praise. Forever the earth will proclaim, you are mighty, you are mighty. So, shall we worship together? Amen. All glory to God who is able. All power and praise Forever the earth will proclaim You are mighty, you are mighty How great is your love It never gives up
Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Zacchaeus the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, Salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Thank you, Liz, for today's reading and for Matt and those who've been involved with facilitating our worship this morning. When I was younger, I was fortunate to be able to travel to Canada with my parents on holiday. We were visiting family friends who lived in Toronto on the edge of Lake Ontario. There were lots of highlights. And for me, one of these was visiting the CN Tower in Toronto, which at the time was the second tallest building in the world. At the top, there's a viewing platform that allows you a panoramic view of the city and the surrounding area. My dad took me to the top of this platform as my mother was scared of heights. It was an amazing sight. You were able to see everything that was all around. But one of the most scariest things that I'd ever encountered was when one, one of the security guards said I could jump up and down on a piece of glass that you walked across where there was nothing below you except a thousand foot drop. I wasn't to know how thick the glass was or how safe it was, but I could see the drop and everything that was below. People were going about their daily activities and wouldn't have realised I was even there. In our story today, we meet another person climbing up to see something. It maybe wasn't quite as tall or as impressive as the CN Tower, but yet this choice to climb up a tree to see Jesus had a life-changing impact on Zacchaeus, who we read about today. In this story today, we find Zacchaeus, a tax collector, hearing that Jesus was travelling through the town of Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. Jericho was a wealthy city. It occupies a strategic position along the road to Jerusalem. So it was a centre of commerce. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. Being a chief tax collector for a wealthy community almost guarantees prosperity. The system was prone to abuse, rewarding the tax collectors for excessive collections and the Jews despised tax collectors because of this, seeing them as mercenaries and thieves. Now, if we think about Zacchaeus, people hung around him because he was wealthy, but they weren't really friends. Loneliness is one of the many plagues of our time. Social media has afforded many to have hundreds, even thousands of friends. Most people will only actually have a handful of people perhaps one or two, they would consider a close friend. This then made Zacchaeus an outsider. There are a number of people who we have seen in the recent stories in the Gospel who fit this category, and Jesus reached out to every one of them. As we look at this verse today, I want to look at how Zacchaeus and Jesus act and respond to each other as we move to the verse and find out what this means for us. Let's start looking at what Zacchaeus wanted to see. If we look at verses 3 to 5, 
Zacchaeus really wanted to see or meet Jesus. Personally, I like the phrase in verse 3, being short. It automatically connects me to the story, as it's an issue I've had all my life. Being the smallest child in the class and being forced to sit cross-legged at the front for every school photograph, right in front of the teacher. Even now, when I go to concerts or I'm standing in a crowd, I have difficulty seeing if somebody taller than me stands in front of me and blocks the view. So, to ensure he was able to see Jesus, Zacchaeus decides to climb up a sycamore fig tree just to get a glimpse of Jesus passing by. But it was more than just curiosity that motivated him to try and get a better look. Could it be that by this time in his life, Zacchaeus' life, he had a heavy heart? I'd go a bit further and suggest actually he felt some conflict going on about his dishonest tactics. You know, Jesus says in John 16 verse 8 that it is the Holy Spirit who brings the conviction of sin to our hearts. This could be why Zacchaeus tries desperately to see Jesus. The second point I want to look at is that then Jesus sees Zacchaeus if we look at verse 5. So what was Jesus' response to seeing Zacchaeus choosing to climb the tree? Zacchaeus' behaviour in this instance is actually quite remarkable. His ability to function as a chief tax collector requires that people respect his power and comply with his directives. His position demanded dignity and authority. On this occasion, however, he exposed himself to ridicule by climbing up a tree. The first thing to notice is that Jesus sees him. Unlike my story earlier where people couldn't see me because of how high up I was, Jesus picks him out from all the other bystanders and people in the crowd. Zacchaeus' persistence in seeking to see Jesus was recognised. Much like the story of the woman who reached out to touch the hem of Jesus' robe in Luke 8, Jesus noticed. He saw him. He called him by name. Do you know something? Jesus sees you. God knows you. He knows your name, what you're thinking, how you're feeling. No matter where you are and what you're going through, God is there. More than that, he's there for you. Whatever you're going through at this time, whether it's loneliness, anxiety, concern about what the future holds, your mental well-being, Jesus sees you. He's there to be with you, to guide and to comfort. We read promises that Jesus makes. Like Matthew 11 verse 28 where he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Like Zacchaeus, all we need is a willing heart. To be open and to listen to what Jesus has to say. To lower the walls of self-preservation that many of us build up because of our experiences of society and how we've been treated. To stop ourselves getting hurt or suffering further pain. Zacchaeus could have thought to himself, Jesus wouldn't waste his time with likes of me. He's got better things to do with other people. You see, Zacchaeus had to humble himself to see Jesus. He had to put aside his pride and allow himself to be seen and for Jesus to see him just like he sees you. Due to the lockdown because of Covid, I'm sure you, like myself, have missed the ability to see a range of different people to be able to interact and to fellowship together. As a bit of an extrovert, I miss being able to gather and hear different stories and find out about people's lives. Like the story of Levi, Zacchaeus shares a meal with Jesus in his house. The difference being is that Jesus invites himself rather than being invited as Levi did. Jesus initiates the action without any prompting from Zacchaeus. You see, in verse 5, he calls him down. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Jesus did not come to Jericho by coincidence. He came to save Zacchaeus. Can you imagine how surprised Zacchaeus must have felt? Jesus was popular. His presence was going to bring honour to any house that he visited. Why would he spend time with a man like Zacchaeus, a tax collector? an outsider. We can read of the response of the crowd in verse 7 where they grumble and mutter saying, 
He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. Just as Zacchaeus exposed himself to ridicule by climbing a tree, so Jesus exposes himself to criticism by visiting Zacchaeus' house. Ordinary people see Jesus as their friend. They didn't want him to honour a man who they would regard as an enemy. You see, what this story is showing us is we don't need to do anything. Jesus has already prepared the way for us. He's already invited us. He's already paid the price for us by going to the cross at Calvary, taking our sin and our shame on his shoulders. Jesus isn't worried about how he was perceived. He wasn't worried about his social status. He was more concerned about Zacchaeus. You see, Jesus didn't tell Zacchaeus he had to put on proper clothes to come and meet with him. He didn't ask him for an offering or a contribution before talking to him. Jesus didn't say, I'm not interested. Why not go look somewhere else? Jesus said, come as you are. I want to spend time with you. Come down from the tree. Jesus looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. He invites us to come to him just as you are. I was reminded recently of a book called No Perfect People Allowed by John Burke. The book looks at how we as a church think about reaching out to those at the margins, how we can engage and share the story of Jesus. As the title suggests, it highlights that we're not perfect and that anyone is able to come as they are, regardless of their background or position. However, through meeting Jesus and experiencing his love and grace, we are changed. That through encountering him, we should not expect to act or see life in the same way that we may currently experience. We need to respond. The same can be said of our story today. What should our response be to being seen and being invited by Jesus? In our verse today, I want to share two things and two ways that Zacchaeus responds in. The first response that Zacchaeus makes is that he comes down from the tree. He listens to Jesus. The result would have been very different if Zacchaeus had failed to respond to Jesus' invitation. Many, like Zacchaeus, get to the point where they know something is wrong. They know something's missing. But unlike Zacchaeus, they never come down from the tree. Pascal, the mathematician and philosopher, said that there's a God-shaped void in every person's life. People throughout human history have tried to fill that void with relationships, drugs, food, materialistic things, luxury, ambition. Jesus says, come on down, that I may dwell in your house. The problem is our hearts grow weary of hearing him. And we don't respond. The second way that Zacchaeus responds is he gives half of what he has to the poor, if we look at verse 8. It says, behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. In our verse last week, we heard that Jesus asked the rich ruler to sell his possessions and give them to the poor. He asks nothing but hospitality for Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus volunteers to give half of his wealth to the poor and give four times the amount taken to anyone he has defrauded. It is Zacchaeus who acts without being asked. Zacchaeus does not make this offer to win Jesus' approval, but to show his gratitude. He's not trying to win salvation, but instead responding to the presence of Jesus the Saviour. He started to bear fruits worthy of repentance. Through responding in this way, he is showing that he is changing. You see, when the Bible speaks of people getting saved, such as in verse 10 in our story, it's not referring to an outward conformity to religious traditions. If you are saved, there should be a change in your character, a change in your motives. There should be a change in the things that we desire and things that we detest. There should be change in how we spend our time and our money. Maybe a change in our vocabulary and the way we speak about things. See, when Jesus saves you, he transforms you from the inside out. If you say you've trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, you're a different person. You're a new creation. Zacchaeus all of a sudden had a desire to clean up his life. But instead of trying it on his own, 
he had some help. He had the power and the strength of God. And it's the same for us today. God is there for us. We need to spend time with him by praying, by reading the scriptures, and with the hope, help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be changed. As we finish today, I want to focus on Jesus' final response to Zacchaeus. In verse 9, it says, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is also a son of Abraham. As a chief tax collector, Zacchaeus had been an outsider, a social leper. Jesus now brings him inside again. He declares him to be a son of Abraham. So Jesus does not save Zacchaeus in isolation, but he also declares that salvation has come to this house, which in this context implies the household or family. Zacchaeus' salvation benefits his whole family, and it also benefits the whole community, as he gives his money to the poor and restitution to those he's afforded. The life of the community is transformed by the presence of a tax collector who people can trust. For the Son of Man came to seek and save which was lost. Christ comes to save us all. In chapter 15, Jesus dealt with at length things that were lost. The lost sheep, a lost coin. Now he proclaims that his central mission is to seek and to save the lost. The word seek implies that Jesus takes the initiative. Just as the shepherd took the initiative to find the lost sheep, we can be sure that when Zacchaeus was climbing a tree to see Jesus, Jesus was seeking to see Zacchaeus so that he might save the lost. Zacchaeus is a role model to everyone of how to receive Jesus. We need to receive Jesus by seeking him, by humbling ourselves, by receiving Jesus no matter where we are, what we've done wrong. You know, why not today ask Jesus into your life? However, it doesn't stop just there. It doesn't stop with just asking Jesus in our life. We also need to be brought into the family. In today's society, where there's this culture of independence and individualism, many believe it's possible to be a good Christian without joining or even attending a local church. But you know what? God doesn't agree with that. Almost every time the word church is used in the Bible, it refers to a local, visible congregation. The New Testament assumes membership in a local congregation. A church family identifies you as a genuine believer. You can't claim to be following Christ and not being committed to join with others. Jesus says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples in John 13. We show what we believe by belonging by involving ourselves with our community. Let me finish this morning with some questions for you to think about. First one, are you willing to allow Jesus to see you today? Are you willing to accept Jesus' invitation? Secondly, are you willing to be changed? Or if you call yourself a Christian, has meeting Jesus changed you? And finally, have you committed to becoming part of the local church community, to support discipleship and be part of the body of Christ? to share God's love in our church, community and world. The good news for every one of us is that Jesus did come to seek and save the lost, which means he can reach us wherever it is. Whatever we got mixed up with, all we need to do is respond. Amen. This week is the anniversary of the start of the first COVID lockdown. And so we come to prayer to remember and thank God for being there with us in the midst of the darkness. We'll be using the refrain, light of the world, bring, bring light, light in our darkness. darkness. And we would invite you to use the candle as a focus as we pray together. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Lord, as we approach the anniversary of the COVID lockdown, we reflect on the dark times of the last year, but remember how you brought light to our darkness. We thank you for the way in which you have blessed our scientists who have used the gifts you have given to them. Continue to inspire them 
and guide them as they try to keep up with this virus as it mutates. We thank you for doctors and nurses who have selflessly ministered to the sick and dying. We thank you for all the other frontline workers like teachers, police officers, firemen and supermarket workers without whom basic needs would not be met. Lord, we thank you for everyone who has sacrificed so much. People have been isolated at home. Some have lost their jobs or been furloughed. Some have struggled to buy food on limited benefits and we've all missed seeing our family and friends. Lord, it has been hard, but we thank you that you have been there beside us. We thank you for the glimmers of hope and the slight relaxation of restrictions. Lord, give people wisdom as they use that newfound freedom so that the virus may be kept in check. Light of the world, bring, bring light, light to our darkness. darkness. We pray for those parts of the world where they can't afford or can't manufacture the vaccine. We remember those nations where due to poverty and poor housing, social distancing is impossible. Lord, help nations to work together to ensure that the poor are not left behind and that the vaccine and treatments are made available to everyone soon. We pray to for nations not only struggling with the pandemic, but also with war, famine and natural disasters, often as a result of climate change. We think especially of the Yemen, Afghanistan, Myanmar and Syria. Light of the world. Bring, bring light, light in our, our darkness. darkness. We thank you for our political leaders who've been willing to take on leadership in such difficult times. They face criticism for every decision they make, as it is either too fast, too slow, too early or too late. It must be hurtful having these things said about you. So Lord, strengthen them and protect them. Help all of us to be more understanding and more gracious. We pray too for our royal family who currently face family disagreement and division. Lord, heal the wounds and hurts that may exist and give them all a spirit of love and reconciliation. And Lord, we pray that for all families who have found lockdown hard, for those where there have been tensions, arguments, and even domestic violence. Lord, protect the vulnerable within those families and stay the hands of the violent. Light of the world, bring, bring light, light in, in our, our darkness. darkness. We pray for our children and young people who have missed so much. Lord, in Joel you say, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. And so, Lord, we claim that promise for all of us, but especially for our children and young people. Lord, give wisdom to the government, governments of the UK and our teachers as they seek to work on how best to make up for the lost time and seek to promote our children and students' education. Light of the world, bring, bring light, light in, in the, the darkness. darkness. We pray for your church throughout the world. We thank you for the ways in which your people have continued to try and bring your kingdom into our communities, through online services, food banks, cap debt centres and much, much more. Lord, we pray that we might be lights in our communities. We thank you for the Pope's recent visit of hope, peace and reconciliation to Iraq. Let us strive to bring hope, peace and reconciliation in our communities and throughout the world as well. We pray for all our leaders as they manage the changes brought about by Covid, but also by a changing society. Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit, be their guide and their counsellor especially here in Tabs as we seek the way forward and a new senior pastor. Light of the world, bring, bring light, light in, in our, our darkness. darkness. We remember those who have been ill with Covid and who are still suffering the physical and emotional effects of that. We ask you to place your healing hand upon them and to make them strong and whole again. We remember too 
those who have lost their lives. We weep with their families and friends. We can't put our arms around them, but Lord, we ask you to give them a sense of your loving arms, which are around them. Comfort them in their grief and give them peace in the sure and certain hope of a future through you. Light of the world. Bring light to our darkness. Now in a few moments of quiet, I would ask you to focus on the light as we remember all who have sacrificed so much in this crisis and all who have died and their families. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we beseech you, and by your great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of these dark times. Grant us your strength and peace and hope through the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
as we finish this morning, let me share some words from 2 Peter chapter 3. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the end of eternity. Amen. Let's share together in the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and a fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.